How's it going, everybody?
all of it is based upon web standards. Now, let's think about how this works. PhoneGap does not have an API for communicating directly with this. Uh, it is a native SDK, and, um, and this particular device is iOS only. And so what I've done is create a native plugin which wraps the capabilities of this SDK, and then I can delegate that, the, the input coming from the device to the JavaScript layer. And now, the input from this device is based upon essentially touches. So uh, when you start touching the device, you receive just a, a, a standard touch event. And with that touch event, then you call into the SDK and say, is that touch event a pen? Now what's interesting about this is, in iOS, you can't subclass a web view. So you, know, you have to employ some really interesting techniques just to be able to do this. And the, if anyone's familiar with writing custom gestures on iOS, uh, it takes advantage of the UI gesture recognizer to then, essentially, before the touch input gets to the web view, it grabs it, it analyzes it, it says, is it a pen? And then if it is a pen, then it delegates that to the JavaScript player. Now, when you're coming up with these kinds of solutions, Getting input from a piece of hardware actually can come in at a very, very, very fast rate. And so when you want to kind of structure your application to be able to integrate with hardware and, and operate properly, you want to think about how much information is coming in, how do we want to handle it, how do we want to process it, because if we have too much information coming in at any point in time, it's going to degrade the overall experience of using the application. You know, it's going to get slow, it's going to get bogged down, it's not going to feel like it's going smooth at any point in time. You notice that, um, while there's a, a little bit of latency between this and the app for screen sharing, there's almost no latency when I'm actually drawing on the device. And there's two techniques that we use to, to really get the most performance out of this. The first is that when you're interacting with a piece of hardware like this, there's two ways I can get in, input that's coming from the, the pen itself. I can either, from the JavaScript layer, pull the native layer to, see, to, to get information, or I can push information from the native layer to the JavaScript layer. Now, any time that you're doing uh, something that's very, very highly performant, you don't want to have any loss, um, it's important to know that pushing from native into JavaScript is significantly faster than pulling uh, from JavaScript into the native layer because there's functions that are exposed on the web views that allow you to just execute JavaScript. When you're going from JavaScript to native and then essentially native back to JavaScript, then it, it uses the, the phone gap bridge and there, there is latency that's involved in just that round trip of calls. So, as I mentioned, I'm intercepting touch events, uh, determining if it's a pen, if it is a pen, executing JavaScript that's on the web view, and then essentially, uh, as part of the JavaScript side of the, the, the native plugin, and I don't think I kind of elaborate on native plugins that much, uh, but native plugins essentially you have a JavaScript player that mirrors a native API layer, and your phone app application in the web view communicates with the JavaScript, JavaScript piece that leverages the phone app native to. Uh, uh, JavaScript bridge to do the, the bidirectional communication between JavaScript and the big player. But um, basically, the. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I just happened to be ADD. But um, the native layer pushes into the JavaScript layer and that allows you to get lots of performance out of it without having to do the back and forth product. The other thing that's happening is it's taking advantage of request animation framework. So is, it, is anybody not familiar with the request animation framework? Okay, a couple of hands. So request animation frame is just an API that's inside your browser uh, or inside the web view that essentially gives you uh, the ability to execute code that is in line with the, the redraw cycles of the browser. And so ra if, rather than redrawing content every single time I get input from the pen, uh, which that can happen at a very, very, very fast rate, uh, more so than the app that you either could necessarily keep up with, uh, what, what's happening is when the input's coming from the pen, um, putting that in a queue, keeping it in the browser, uh, in, in, in memory in JavaScript, and then on the request animation frame interval, going ahead and drawing whatever input came in during that in, uh, interval cycle. And so, by leveraging those two techniques, uh, the, the pushing from native to JavaScript, and then um, actually only doing the drawing on the request animation frame interval, we're able to have a very nice drawing experience that's really goes beyond just a simple touch, but you know, we can take advantage of you know, interacting with the application, causing actions to happen with the application without actually having to touch the interface itself. So that's one example I wanted to show. Come on over time. 10 minutes, perfect. The next thing that I want to show is an application uh, that takes advantage of hardware that I put together for Android. Now, 
This one is based upon a gaming scenario. So I've got a game. This is a Pokemon A Nexus 7. And well, let me go ahead and connect this. And what I've got is a game controller. It's just going to take a moment to connect. Okay, this is just working. Demo gods, come on.
small number of hands. Yeah, uh, I mean, one way it, it intercepts the JavaScript prompt. Um, one way it uses URL events. One way it uses uh, an actual API that, to invoke functions with event view. So there's different ways that the framework itself um, communicates back and forth with with, with the, the native layer. And you know, each one of those have, has different advantages or disadvantages. And so you know, I went through every single one of those to, to find out which one was most performant. I honestly don't remember which one I ended up with. But the, the other thing. <laughs> The other thing that uh, the other thing that I did was, um, you know, I said that I, I was uh, tried invoking functions directly on the web view based on input as coming from the controller. I tried buffering it, but then once I received on the JavaScript side, I also buffer it again and then only update the content that's in the web view based upon again that request animation for minimal. So it you know can get a little bit complex in, in, as far as how you're structuring it for performance, but. The, the, the truth of the matter is that we can do really, really cool things, and all of that is really based upon web technologies. Yeah, I had to write a little bit of code and, um, to, to communicate with the device, but we're really taking the web to the next level. And so the moral of what I'm trying to say with phone map and hardware is that you know, we're empowering the, the, the next generation of the web. We're making it do really cool things, really exciting things. And by experimenting with APIs, experimenting with hardware, you know, we can take that knowledge and then we can push forward standards and you know, essentially make things better for all of us in the future and be able to take advantage of like, advanced functionality. So with that, wow, I'm actually early. Uh, I can ramble on a little bit more. Any questions about these? No, no questions. Oh, yeah. How much time do you think you spent writing the uh, About two hours. So the question is, how long did it take to write the, the name plugin for the controller? It took about two hours. And all I did was um, take the, the code sample from the SDK that, that you can download uh, from the controller. The controller itself is a MoGo gamepad. And pulled up the basic listener example, which just gives you input anytime a button is pressed. And then stripped out their native pieces of it, and then just put wrappers to, to whenever an event occurs, I take that input from the controller, turn it into a just string, and that string is actually a JavaScript function. And then I tell that JavaScript function, which contains the parameters from the controller, to be executed on the JavaScript layer. And uh, it, it's actually a really, really simple piece of code. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really easy to implement. I spent far more time actually building the HTML game. Uh, than I did actually doing the controller. And, and what's really cool about that is the game itself, um, I wrote that as, uh, did any, how many of you attended Adobe Max? Woo! Come on, there are many more people there. Adobe Max, yeah. Next year, all of you will be there. Um, with Adobe Max, there's a, a game called Max Me that is kind of a companion app to the, to the conference. I work on that with a, another fellow evangelist, uh, Serge. And this was kind of like a sub app inside of that. And, and it was just about trying to explore uh, this little universe, uh, hit the Adobe icons, you win points. The more points you hit, you can win a prize. Uh, that app itself was on, uh, I think we just targeted iOS and Android for it, because you know, it's a phone app, uh, it, it's portable. That code also executes flawlessly in the browser. And all I wanted to do was just get that and, and be able to control it with a piece of hardware. So I just took the exact same code, wrote the native plugin, tied into it. If I wanted to do the same thing on iOS, yeah, I'd have to write a different iOS plugin um, for the, to, to interact with the iOS SDK, but I could actually write the plugin in such a fashion so that it, the API mirrors the API that I created for this, and then you use the exact same code to control based on hardware on both of those different platforms. So with that, you know, I am taking my time limit now. So I'm going to say thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, all the code for this will be available on my blog, uh, TriceDesigns.com. I'm Andy Trice on Twitter. Um, the, the example that I did for the pressure sensitive stylus is already on my blog. Uh, you can go download that today. The, um, the game controller example will be on there. If not later today, it will be there on Monday. So thank you. Woo!